Okay, <laughs> our next and final speaker of this session and conference is Maxime Briand. I'm sorry, butchering your name and many others. <laughs> but talking about extending abstract categorical grammars with feature structures, theory of practice. Thank you. No. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so first time I'm going to talk about the motivation for this one. Like hmm? button. Yes. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so first I'm going to talk about the motivation for this work, and then I will speak about the extension uh, of ACG uh, for abstract category grammar. Then I will present some results, both theoretical and practical. Okay, uh, so what is an ACG? It's a grammatical framework, which is able to encode context-free grammar, but also mildly context-sensitive grammar, such as pre adjoining grammar, and also linear rewriting system. Uh, it's from the tradition of category grammars, except that we use a uniform representation of linguistic levels. We use linear lambda calculus. So we have a simple linear type theory with a basic set of uh, atomic types, and we have a linear functional type. Um, trees, string, and formulas, uh, logical formulas, are represented with linear lambda calculus. So you have a set of constants, a set of variables, the linear abstraction, and the linear application. Um, and how do you define um, a linguistic level? You, you define it with a, a high order signature. Um, basically, an ACG generates two languages. So you have on one hand the abstract language, and on the other hand, the object language. The abstract language is the set of admissible structures. And the object language is the represent the concrete forms of both admissible structures. So, for example, you can have a syntactic tree in the abstract tree structure and a string in the object in the concrete structure. It can also be um, semantic or many other things. You do whatever you want. <laughs> um, so we have. Through operation in ACG, you have the realization, which is going from an abstract term to a concretion of this term. And you have also parsing, which is available, um, which finds the antecedent of uh, an object term. Um, for some cases of uh, ACG, um, parsing can be reduced to um, the evaluation of a data log program. And it's polynomial, which is a good progress. Um, so, um, but we have a problem uh, in ACG and in CG in general. The common way to deal uh, concisely with uh, morpho syntactic combination are to use a feature structure. However, we have all, all we have uniquely uh, atomic types. So, for example, um, how can we encode uh, this CG with feature structure? Well, there is a naive way to do it, which is to duplicate types. So, if we have a debt which depends on number, we we generate debt SG and debt PL, etc., etc. And we have also to duplicate the rules, um, which is fine because we are converting this into a simple CFG and we know how to encode a simple CFG into an ECG. However, if you do like uh, this kind of manipulation in French or a lot of languages, actually. Um, it's not scalable because you have a big combinatorial explosion. And this is not satisfying at all. So this works try to answer, to solve this problem. Uh, 
uh, I don't see my time. Oh. Uh, okay. Um, okay. This combinatorial, this combinatorial explosion has um, two main consequences. The development of the linguistic resource um, and the maintenance yes, increased significantly. And syntactic analysis become very less efficient. So I am going to propose an extension based on three basic principles. Um, the goals are to introduce a very conservative extension. We don't want to break the properties and we want to feature feature structures. And we want to see what are the effects of this extension on the large scale gun, wide coverage cameras. So the first principle is to use basic um, types of functional programming, enumeration and record types simple record types. Um, so we define basic atomic features with enumeration. So for example, the number can be defined as a singular of the row uh, in French, uh, in, and the gender uh, masculine or feminine. And we can compound this atomic uh, structure with records, basic records. Here we have uh, the definition of a very basic uh, agreement uh, with the number and the gender. Um, so back to my previous slide. So here it's a type and um, a concrete uh, structure, feature structure will be a term with a number singular and uh, a gender masculine. So basically feature structures as terms and we need a type theory which allow to a uh, term dependency in the types. And this is this corresponds to dependent type theory. And we have seen yesterday a lot of things about it. So basically, we are trying to attach uh, feature structures to syntactic categories. So we use we see N as a type family. And this allows to do syntactic annotation with feature structure. Okay, um, but it's not enough because in, if we if you want to factorize grammars, you need also um, variables, and this can be done with uh, dependent products. With dependent products, so here we have a basic definition of the agreement um, in type theory. Uh, but we have to be very careful to not break the property because with general general dependent type theory, uh, parsing become undecidable. So we put a several restrictions on this dependent type. So first, uh, the type of a parameter should always be a feature structure type, and a feature structure is always finite. This is very important. And um, we use a Prenex Prenex form. Um, so basically, you will have a sequence of pi and then your types. You cannot have um, a pi in, inside this uh, functional type. So to give an overview of a system, we have the feature types um, with enumeration and record types. We have um, at the term level of feature structure, we have Enumerable, variable, uh, record, and selection. Um, we need also kind to define sy syntactic categories with feature structures. So we have basically either a type is a proper type or uh, it's neither feature structures. And at the type level, we have a generalization of the simple atomic types, type application and uh, type abstraction. And to enforce the Prenex requirement, uh, we define a new level, which is a, a sort of generalized version of types. At the term level, we introduce feature application 
here, feature abstraction and case analysis, like you can see in you can you can see that kind of thing in Haskell or kind of okay, so I will present some theoretical reasons uh, about this uh, extension. So basically uh, you can we can use the same principle as the um, one used for the transformation of a simple uh, of a CFG with Peter Schuxer uh, to a simple CFG by uh, duplicating types, uh, duplicating rules, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, we can always um, extract a simple CFG from this extension. So basically, we are just we are not adding anything in terms of expressive power, but it's very useful for uh, a linguist. To develop very wide coverage journals, um, it's also possible to reduce uh, to use the data lag reduction uh, by using several principles. So the atomic feature structure are encoded as data log constants, and uh, all the record will disappear. We flatten out and we eliminate them. Um, and feature types will be encoded as a thread decade. So for example, um, we have a very simple uh, a tiger, a tiger example. So here uh, we introduce basic um, feature structure, so singular interval in the um, example. And we also add um, type, uh, type notation for restricting the variables. And it works also for trade journey grammars and more general versions. Um, okay. Uh, I will switch now to uh, several experiments that we did. So uh, the goal was to study the practicality of the extension um, by working on the um, right coverage grammar. Um, and so what we did was to develop a an ICG compiler with this feature structure, and we have a, we rewrite a, a right sub subset uh, of a French type grammar. Um, <clears throat> and so we have reduced um, with this, with this ex extension um, the size of a grammar by 18. So you can see that in uh, the most impacted trees are verbs, preposition, link words, and punctuation, basically, and nouns. Um, so it seems that it works quite well. Um, this grammar is used to generate financial records um, in French. Um, and we were asking, is it possible to increase the speed of um, the, the, the textual generation. So the generation, the generation process is based on a simple pipeline. So you have a general grammar without encores. Uh, it's uh, the encoding of a, a trait training grammar. You have a semantic graph. You initialize, you initialize the grammar from the, from the semantic graph. Uh, and wait, because uh, we need to, to add lexicalization, that's why we do the semantic graph. And then we do the second generation. So for basic uh, sentences uh, that describe the value for KPIs, um, we have a semantic graph size of uh, six. So we have two experiments, one with uh, this kind of simple sentences, and we can increase a bit the complexity uh, by describing by describing the variation. Um, so here we have a 70 graph size of uh, 15, and we are describing the map of course margin uh, in English. And so we observe that uh, with this extension, we divide by eight on a simple, on the simple uh, described value, uh, the time, to generate a report. And for the discrete variation, um, we divide by 17, which is a lot more. So it seems that um, the more complex the syntactic structure, the more visible the gain of sales. 
In conclusion, uh, we retain the formal property of core FTG. We offer substantial benefits in terms of grammar size reduction and performances. And uh, we need to work a lot. Okay, I was too quick. <laughs> um, uh, to re introduce reentrancy and subtyping and also unification, which is very important, like we have seen this afternoon. Uh, thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, <laughs> We have lots of time for questions. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the talk. And uh, my question is about the, uh, how do you represent the disjunction of features? Like, for example, the verb sing is either a uh, base form with any subject, or uh, it can be a present tense verb with uh, sub only a sub present subject. Yeah, uh, we use uh, several constants to define the different kind of uh, verb. But uh, we don't have uh, intersections type now, which is sad, but yes, it's. Uh, uh, so you, you need to split those two uh, uses at the two different squares. Mm. Uh, thank you. One question. Okay, Comment. <laughs> voice. Oh, no, it's even more. <laughs> Hello. So please, please ask your question. I have a comment. Yes. Am I am I allowed to say? Yes. Okay, so, thank you. You're... So so your okay. presentation is wonderful. And uh, it is uh, on, on a topic that is uh, very, very close to my heart, uh, if I can say so. Uh, so uh, this idea, uh, including for uh, categorical grammars, I have been promoting for years, including in a paper on mathematics of in, uh, representations of uh, this grammatical information with feature structures in a paper in uh, Fundamenta Informatica, Informaticaem. So what you presented is exactly on that. So I'm very oh. happy, I'm very, very, very happy to see it. And I mm -hmm. wish you great, great luck. And to tell you one thing, if we go back through the, um, through the slides, you will generate much more projects, PhD theses or postdoctoral or just research project, uh, big. Um, so not only on financial text generation, go backward, yes. Oh, okay, the graph, the graph, yes, exactly this. So here, actually, first is a question. So first you have a general grammar and then you have a separate semantic graph. So do you include semantic, syntax semantics inside of the general grammar and then merge it with additional semantical graph or just the, the general grammar is syntax and then it's merged with the semantic uh, graph. Okay, thanks for the question. Uh, basically, we have a composition of two ACG with the derivation tree as a pilot for the semantic and the strings. So here there is a bunch of tasks to uh, to improve your approach into bunch a lot of because it's much more efficient if you do it in the general grammar you do it syntax semantics step by step oh. in a compositional way and that is what I have been yes that is very that is possible yes it works. Yeah, so I have been working on this after the uh, after the Fundamental Informatica paper for years, and it is absolutely possible. I presented already steps. Uh, that is a very, very good advice uh, to you to try it, but it is uh, not a task for one or two weeks, it's uh, for some years, as you have it, uh, just to extend it. So uh, I, I am very happy. So thank you for your presentation. Amazing. So I think we have another question. Yeah, I, I, I have a question about the, the general grammar and semantic graph uh, kind of plots here. 
And mm -hmm. so, so could you tell me uh, right, where your general gravel rules come from? Yes, okay. Uh, so the general grammar is defined by a linguist people. So it's an ACG. Uh, a or is, is this a hybrid Yes, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, from the, um, um, from a, a subset of uh, a wide coverage grammar from ABA. Oh. Um, and the semantic graph uh, is basically just uh, um, the, the data. So, for example, <coughs> um, in this case, okay, um, you can, okay, so we have a revenue here. Um, we have an entity, which is X in this case, and we have a recall in English. So, basically, uh, the semantic graph is just a recall of X and uh, revenues and the value. Also, oh, so kind of frame of kind of, kind of yeah. Uh, so that's your semantic yeah. representation. And, 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 but, and, and these are very, so, and, and your grammar is like, that's been handcrafted, is kind of uh, limited to, to just this, the kind of data that's represented by uh, Okay, uh, the semantic, yes. The syntax is very general. Oh, I see. Thanks. Other questions? Can I go? Okay, then let us thank our speaker once again.